up everybody, how you doing? Welcome back to another Epic Quack Tuts. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make this really crazy sound. Not really sure how to describe it just yet. I'll come up with something once I actually make the video and come up with a title, but let me just show you what it sounds like real quick. <laughs> If you guys like this sound, hit subscribe because there's not one person on YouTube putting out sounds like this. It's made in serum. It's called tentacles because I thought it sounded like it was saying tentacles, kind of. And I was watching a noisier video on YouTube before I made this, so it seemed to it seemed to make sense. What's important here are the FX, which there's a decent amount of, but these wavetables pretty much don't matter at all. Let me show you why. So I'm gonna turn everything off, even the filter. It sounds like nothing. It just sounds like some fuzzy, fuzzy mess. So, I mean, that just goes to show you how important these effects are and how powerful they are. You will hear why I thought it was important to use the square wave in Oscillator A once I add the effects, but for now, it's not going to matter. Let's just jump right into it. Oscillator A, like I said, it's basic shapes and it's a square wave. Bring the octave down three. Uh, top part, you don't have to worry about. And we, like I said, we're using FM from B. So you're going to bring that to about 39%. Level is all the way down because that's going to be modulated. So then Oscillator B... Uh, distorted bass dropper under digital. Uh, why did I go with that one? No particular reason. A lot of this stuff is just experimenting, so I'm not going to be able to explain certain things because it just kind of happened. There's no logic behind it, really, like with this LFO2 here. It just kind of worked out. So um, the unison for that's going to be a 9. 9 voices, detune all the way up because why the hell not? Uh, the blend is at 75, and the random's all the way down, because that, when you have the unit set up so high, when you have, like, over 8 voices, and you have this random all the way down, it creates a cool comb filtering effect. I touched on this a lot more in my most recent tutorial, the machine gun based tutorial. I explained this a lot more, but, uh, the random, it just sounded cool for this one. Uh, wavetail position is gonna be all the way up, 256, and the, uh, warp sync one half, and that's gonna be at 12.38%. Alright. So we have our filter right here, which is a phase 48 plus filter. I like this filter a lot. I mean, already it's bringing some flavor to the sound. You can hear those vowels coming in a bit, but it also gives that nice, you know, phaser kind of effect. It just sounds really sick. Perfect for making growl basses. If you're ever struggling with the sound and you're looking to just kind of enhance it a bit, throw on this phaser filter 48 plus or minus, bring up the resonance a bit or bring up the resonance a lot. And um, that can definitely help you out. So right now I have the cutoff at 1154 hertz. Resonance is at 3 o'clock, 83%. It's up pretty high. So that's so you can really, really hear the effect of this filter. Uh, the drive boosted it a bit, 33%. The mix is 100%. So uh, oscillator A, you can see that's clicked. That's the only thing that's going through the filter. We got a noise oscillator just to kind of fill out the sound a bit. AC hum, number one. Everything's just default with except the levels all the way down, but it's going to be modular. So before I get to the uh, modulations, I want to start bringing in each effect one by one to show what it's doing and, you know, the effect that it's giving. So first thing is the hyper dimension. So, you know, it's giving it a bit of modulation. It's giving it some width and it's giving it a nice hollow timbre that I love about this hyper effect. I've said it a lot in my tutorials. It sounds kind of boxy, I don't know, it just sounds really sick. So that's the hyper dimension, and I'm pretty sure it's just the default setting, except the mix is at 50%. Everything else I usually just leave leave alone. Uh, the the expander is all the way down, not using it. We got our distortion, so I'll turn that on now. I mean, really not that big of a difference. The down sample type is, that's what's going to give you that classic bit crushed kind of sound. I, I chose to use it because you can hear this sounds really messy and kind of crunchy, and I thought that would... Definitely help achieve that kind of sound by using this down sample distortion type. So that's why I, I used it. I'll bring the mixes at 25% now, but I'll bring it all the way up. So you can hear the kind of that big crush sound that we're getting, but... I just had it at 25%. Drive is at eh, 56%. So EQ, I'll turn that on now. You hear that's starting to bring, that's really what's giving it the, the vowels and the sound, making it sound like it's talking in a, in a way. And you can see it's just a high pass with a high resonance or high Q, which is giving it that peak right there. And it's just a notch. But this notch towards the last wub is turning into a peak. The way I'm doing that is by LFO3. So just a square wave. 
or you know a square shape whatever at a rate of one half so like i said every third wub you can hear you can see this uh modulation is taking effect on the gain which is like i said just turning that notch into a peak which is giving it two different vowel characteristics in one sound so it just makes it sound a lot more interesting it just sounds really cool but that was just a matter of experimenting eh, let me try this out it worked out pretty damn good you'll hear a lot more once i get the finished sound so uh like i said it's a high pass or low cut on the left side uh q is at 60 percent to give us that peak frequency is at 70 hertz so on the right side is our notch right here, and it's going to start with the gain down minus 17.8 dB. Uh, the Q is going to is also being modulated, and it's going to start really narrow at 57%. And the reason it's starting narrow, as you can see right here, is because it's a notch. We're cutting out frequencies. I don't want to be cutting out too much. But this Q is going to get wider. You can see that peak is much wider when it's uh, additive rather than subtractive, you know, when, it's, when the gain's bring, being brought up. And that's just to kind of make it more natural. When you're doing additive EQing, you want your you want your curve to be a bit wider just so it sounds more natural, I guess. So it's, you're not just boosting one tiny area. Unless that's what you're going for. I mean, there's no rules here. I also just thought I made the valve more, more clear by doing that. I hope I'm making sense here. I'll touch more on it once I actually route the modulations. Um, but yeah, so that's the cue which is at 57%, and the frequency is going to be at 3250 hertz. I just fucked it up. God damn. That's our EQ. Now we're getting to the nitty gritty of it. So filter is our ring mod filter. I'm going to turn that on. You can hear it sounding really, really crunchy. If you're looking to get super crunchy, crazy, distorted basses, this ring mod filter is the way to go and the way to do it is by just leaving the cutoff anywhere like around this like zero to nine o'clock six to nine o'clock region is going to give you that nice crunchy sound anything higher you're getting some crazy like squeaking kind of shit which is also cool so i have the mix at zero percent and i have the mod wheel routed to the mix that way i can turn this effect on and off with it off you know you're getting you're just not you don't have that nice crunchiness so um that's why i have that so the mod wheel you're gonna bring that modulation up to 63%, or you could just bring the mix up to 63%, it's up to you. I brought the drive up a bit, 26%, the resonance up, 62%, and then that cutoff is gonna be all the way down, being modulated by this weird LFO too. Then what's make, what makes this sound is the delay. I'll turn the delay on. That's what brings the sound to life, is this delay. And I'm using the same technique as it would any other robo bass by having a really short delay on both sides, left and right channels, which is giving it that nice robo bass metallic kind of feel to it. So it's on normal, the mix is at 64% and puts us on link, BPM off, make sure it's on link. That way the left and right channels will be at the exact same uh, time setting and it's at 29.86 uh, milliseconds. But what's important is the feedback. The feedback's only at 22%. So if I were to bring it up to like 50%, <laughs> It's like, you know, way too much of a robo bass. I just kind of wanted that timbre of that delay in there. And that was at like 25, 22%, whatever. And what's also important is this filter right here. You can see it is being used. Uh, it's at 760 hertz. The Q's at 2.6. So, I mean, I'm pretty much just rolling off the high and the low end. That's giving it, making it more hollow. It sounds a bit cleaner as well. It just sounded really cool with that delay like that. So that's our delay. And then we have our compressor just brings everything up you know it just brings it all to life so just multi-band compressor gain is up 11.4 db everything else just at the default settings mix 100 percent all right so let's touch on these modulations now which are really important so first thing is lfo1 which is our main wub maker it's just three wubs that's all it is uh rate is one half and the starting point is at the second is right at this middle mark right here so just right click on that dot and you'll hit set starting point here so the down the link will be in the description for this patch. So um, I don't expect you to make this shit. So let's just bring LFO1 where it needs to be. And I'll, I'll explain as much as I can. So LFO1, first place you're going to bring it to is the level of oscillator A. And just bring it all the way up. Then you're going to bring it to the warp of oscillator A, which is our FM. And bring it up to 26. If you were to bring it all the way up. It just sounds a bit darker. Bringing it up all the way kind of just sounds a little too bright, too metallic-y, I guess. It just sounded right around 26. So that's that's that. Oscillator B, also going to bring it to the warp type and bring it down minus 32. So if I were to turn this sync off, definitely sounds 
way better with that sync. So definitely combine the sync warp types when you're doing FM. I mean, just experiment with it. Uh, definitely helps. We got our filter here. This is just a matter of preference. It just sounded the best with the uh, LFO one on the cutoff being brought down minus 31. And then our level of our noise oscillator, just bring it up to taste. I brought it up 41. If you want to bring it up more, it's up to you. Also, now that I have all these effects turned on, let me explain why I chose the uh, square wave for oscillator A. If I had to bring to the sine wave, it just sounds kind of weak. I mean, you can hear that square wave, which is nice and sharp very gritty it just sounded the best so that's why i went with the square wave i just kind of swept through these and the square wave worked the best by far hop into our fx section here and we're going to bring lfo1 to the drive of our distortion and you're going to bring it up 58 now to our eq here first place is the frequency on the left side bring it up 35 and then the frequency on the right side bring it down minus 26 so I mean, you can see these they're just merging into each other giving us our vowels now lfo3 like i said before is what's making that notch right here into a bell curve or a peak, which is giving us two different vowel characteristics. It's going from more of a neuro kind of feel to more of a vowel uh, talking kind of feel, I guess you could say. And you're gonna bring that to the gain of this right side here and bring it up 61. Then you're also gonna bring it to the Q and bring it down minus 15. Like I said, when this gain goes up, it's gonna make that Q wider. Which is making that valve more in your face, I guess you could say. It just makes it more noticeable. So for the ring mod, uh, I have LFO2, which looks like this, uh, routed to the cutoff. And you're going to bring it up 29. So I highly recommend just download this patch and follow along. You don't have to actually go through making this. It's just a complete random pattern that I, that I made when I was making my Olasile tutorial way back. So, I mean, this cutoff is just bouncing back super fast between all these different positions. Uh, that are set by this LFO right here. So like I said, I mentioned this LFO 2 is also doing one more thing, and that's modulating the master tune of Serum. You can see right here, LFO 2, master tune. I, I just like to do that in the matrix, it's just easier. So our source is LFO 2, destination is on their global, the uh, master tune. And that modulation is set to 48. Now that modulation has an aux source, which is macro 2, which means I can use macro 2 to turn that modulation on and off. I can bring it in as much as I want by using this macro. So right now, macro two is at 64%. If I were to bring it all the way up. You can hear that screeching, that like real cool, it's really not necessary. But it does add some pretty sick flavor to this sound, which I definitely like. So I, I recommend using it. So post-processing wise, I do have uh, Camel Crusher for some extra saturation. Beef it up a bit. And then we have Serum FX. So Serum FX is just adding more distortion and uh, some phaser. You know, this soft clipper is definitely beefing it up a bit. The drive is at 65%, mix is at 38%. Then we have our phaser. So I just kind of messed around with this until it sounded right. It's not too in your face. Just enough to give it some more movement. So what you want to do is turn on note latch. That's going to allow these modulations to actually take effect. And the rate is at zero. Feedback is at 74%. Frequency at 57 hertz. And the depth is at 52%. So bring LFO1 to your depth and just bring it up 48. And this is what LFO1 looks like. That's Serum FX, pretty simple, and that is the sound. So hit that subscribe button, throw your boy a like, and I'll see you guys in the next one.